purifiers, does that debate to some of them? Well, if you have allergies, it can definitely help. But do you know which ones are kind of thing? Yeah. You know, just, I would get a, a standard HEPA filter. It's, uh, I forget what that stands for, high energy particular. Yeah. Just go to Consumer Reports and just get something that they recommend. Yeah, yes. Uh, are there different kinds of dental appliances for sleep apnea, or just one if you... No. Maybe, Dr. Maybe Dr. Neufeld can answer that. Is it there, there are quite a few. They, they all basically um, do the same thing. They move your jaw down and forward, opening up the airway. There are other devices, tongue retaining devices. Uh, they've kind of gone out of flavor in the past number of years. But most of the uh, oral appliances, uh, they're different models, different versions, where the mechanism is located. Some are easier to use than others. Some give more room for your tongue than others. But basically, they all move your jaw forward to open up the airway in the back. Are you, uh, do you do those? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what I'm finding is nobody takes my insurance. That's the we, problem, right? We can try the working industry? with it. We can try working with it. Yeah, it's, yeah, the problem's the insurance companies. Yeah. Not the doctors, it's the insurance companies. Okay. <laughs> can any dentist make those, or does that have to be a specialty? Well, any dentist is licensed to do it, uh, well, but they should be trained in, in doing it so they know the, the right position, how much to get the jaw forward, what the implications are on your musculature and your TMJ. That requires additional training or expertise. Yes. One last question. Yeah, when you can get that at the VA. No, I can't get that at the VA. <laughs> I got one at the VA. Okay. I got one at the VA. Does it help? Yes. Just answer one last question. Yeah. Uh, when, when breathing is just disrupted during sleeping, mm -hmm. for any one of the reasons that you mentioned, what's the effect that it might have on blood pressure and heart rate? Okay. Um, not too surprisingly, huge. Um, if you actually hooked you up to a heart rate monitor and blood pressure machines and you had one apnea, your blood pressure is going to just go through the roof uh, and your heart rate goes up. And then, so imagine if, if someone just held your breath for 30 seconds and then you just start breathing again, how your heart rate is going to go up, you're going to start sweating. It's that sympathetic response. And this is happening you know, 20, 30, or 40 times every hour. So, and this is why over the long term, the blood pressure just kind of, it never normalizes. It just kind of keeps up higher and higher. The, the, the message to the brain is that the blood is not being oxygenated effectively, and, and that affects your, your heart rate. Exactly. Right, so it, basically it knows that you're not breathing, and so you're not getting any oxygen to your brain and to your heart. So to compensate for this, you wake up. But then if you keep waking up too often, you're not sleeping normally, and that has a side effect too. Um, so it's, it's like a, it's a vicious cycle. The reason why I'm asking is because um, uh, I was having uh, SVT episodes, uh, supraventricular tachycardia episodes, usually occurring around the same time, 3.34 o'clock in the morning. My cardiologist uh, uh, suggested that I go for a test to determine if I suffer from sleep yeah. apnea. And uh, it turned out that I was. Mm -hmm. And then with the use of the machine, this epi these episodes mm -hmm. ended. I'm not surprised. That was very smart of him. Notice at the same time, oh, sorry. Notice at the same time every night. So that's along a number of different sleep cycles. So once you reach a certain stage of a sleep cycle, you stop breathing more often. It's probably when you start to enter REM sleep, that's when, when your muscles relax more. And that's what aggravates or triggers because it, it stimulates the heart. It gives you, you erratic you know, heartbeats. Should you not drink water at night because it gets you up and you have to go to the bathroom? Because then it's, it, you know, does that make sense? You know, you'll get conflicting results, conflicting answers because there's a trend to recommend more water, you know, that six or eight cups of water a day theory. Um, and then there are people who say, well, drink if you're thirsty. But don't do it in excess. You know, but one thing to realize is that sleep apnea, by definition, will make you pee more. You produce it because what happens is when the heart, when you stop breathing, you kind of take a deep breath. And it kind of, it, that negative pressure prevents the blood from going into your heart, going back into your heart. 
And then when you start breathing again, it gushes back in and it dilates the, the atrium. And there's a hormone called atrial natriuretic peptide and that makes you pee more. Because if, if you think there's your fluid overloaded, it sends signals to your kidneys to make more urine. But what they've also shown is that whenever you go to the bathroom a lot, like two or three times a night, if you wake up and you think you have to go to the bathroom, it's not because you're, you have to go to the bathroom, it's because you stop breathing. And you wake up, you think you have to go to the bathroom. So you're making a little more urine and you're waking up more often. And they've even shown that just having to go to the bathroom two or three times a night increases your chances of death, just overall risk of death, probably because it's all related to sleep apnea. Yeah. But if you use a CPAP machine, lowers the risk. Yeah, lowers the risk. In, in general, it does help a lot. What was that? If you, if you treat the sleep apnea, then many of these bathroom you know, breaks at night tend to get better. And the same thing that happens in children who, who wet their beds, take out their huge tonsils, they get better.